PhD student in cognitive science at the University of Trento in Italy, holding a scholarship funded by the Digital Humanities Group of Fondazione Bruno Kessler. The primary focus of her PhD project is the examination of sensory descriptions in textual data and how their linguistic encoding has evolved over time. Throughout her PhD, she actively collaborated with the H20 project Ode Europa. The goal of the project is to demonstrate that critically engaging with a sense of smell and exploring our scent a heritage is an important and viable means of connecting and promoting Europe's tangible and intangible cultural heritage. So we are very excited to be uh, listening to this uh, talk, uh, which is now being recorded and the title is Exploring Changes in the Sensory Descriptions Over Time a frame-based approach to the study of smelling and tasting. So, um, Teresa, you have about 40, 45 minutes. We're flexible, and then there will be time for everyone to ask questions. Okay, so the floor is yours. Okay. Okay, so... Uh... I, I go. I uh, I'll welcome everybody. I am Teresa Paccosi. So today I'm going to present a part of my uh, PhD project uh, that, as Barbara said, is on uh, the uh, analysis uh, of uh, sensory descriptions over time. And, and I work especially with smell and taste. Uh, the presentation is structured in the following way. I first introduce the framework uh, that I use for the annotation part uh, that uh, uh, it's been created to create benchmarks uh, that are used as training uh, for uh, two systems uh, for the automatic extraction of uh, stuttery and factory information from text. After that part, uh, I describe some uh, analysis that we have run uh, with um, the output of the smell system and uh, some exploratory uh, analysis of uh, uh, on taste, on the benchmark of taste. So. Just a second, yeah. I'm double check that people can hear you. Because, so you, you are not muted, right? No, no. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Uh, is every, everyone able to hear everything? Hear everything? Perfect. Okay. And uh, so, uh, first of all, as Barbara said, uh, the smell, uh, the part of the research that was devoted to smell uh, was part of this uh, Horizon 2020 project uh, in which I actively collaborated in, to, in the last two years. And uh, it, the project uh, has uh, the, several work packages, uh, eight work packages uh, uh, that was uh, I work uh, uh, with uh, my in the to the with the foundation. I work in the textual uh, work package, uh, but there are also uh, work packages that work with uh, pictures or the chemical reproduction of smells. Uh, so uh, the annotation framework uh, on which we base uh, our benchmark uh, is. Uh, um, is based on the frame semantics uh, and the, this uh, project that is called frame net, which events are defined as frames, where frame uh, is uh, the scenario that a user of language uh, needs to understand the meaning of specific words. Uh, it is uh, every frame is composed by two main components that are lexical units and frame elements. With lexical units, we intend words that uh, evoke or trigger a specific frame. Uh, in this example, pays, uh, the one that is underlined, uh, is a trigger for the frame of commerce pay. While the frame elements are, are the specific, uh, the frame specific semantic rules that can be associated to these uh, lexical units that help in defining the frame. Uh, so in this case, for example, the man is uh, the frame element of buyer and the rent of goods. Starting from frame net, uh, that is uh, thought to, to be uh, a general purpose one. Uh, Tonelli and Menini in 2021 present uh, some annotation guidelines uh, for uh, the uh, olfactory event in the sense that smell was part in frame net uh, of uh, uh, more general frames uh, like perception active or perception experience. So they define only one single frame, the olfactory event, to which they assign uh, some borrow frame elements from frame net and some uh, domain specific one uh, that are added specifically for the uh, olfactory event. Starting from their annotation guidelines, I create uh, another guidelines for taste. Uh, and uh, even if taste uh, has a specific frame in frame net, uh, that is uh, the 
tasting frame. Uh, it only contains two lexical units. So uh, I decided anyway to create uh, another single frame, the gustatory event, to which I assigned some borrow frame elements for from especially the tasting uh, um, frame, but also the uh, ingestion frame, the one uh, uh, that is related to food. Uh, and so also in this case, I got some domain specific and some borrow frame elements. These are an example of the uh, lexical units that uh, are chosen for the annotation part for the taste benchmark. As you can see, they are uh, part of uh, they are uh, taken from different part of uh, uh, speech. So you can have nouns, adjectives, and verbs, or adverbs. Uh, at the same, in the same way, also as well, uh, have a different part of speech. Uh, and this uh, category other is uh, simply something that is uh, olfactory related, but uh, it is not part of this, uh, it's not similar to the other um, words. Uh, so, uh, so these are the lexical units uh, uh, that we call uh, taste word and smell uh, in, in the annotation guidelines. Uh, and these are the frame elements for taste, uh, uh, apart from two that I uh, define more in details because they are the one that we use for our analysis. Uh, but this uh, one, as you can see also here, these are the seven frame elements of nine, uh, and we have some domain specific ones and one and some that are borrowed like location or effect. Also smell is as uh, nine frame elements, uh, some specific ones and some that are borrowed from frame net. But I want to uh, put in the attention of uh, on this one. Uh, that is uh, the taste source and then the smell source that we see in a few seconds. Uh, that is, uh, um, in a very naive way, in this case, it is the food, <laughs> in the sense that it's every entity or object that can be tasted by uh, the experience or, or the taster. Uh, so in this case, uh, as we have seen for the commerce pay example, we have uh, the underlying word that is a lexical unit uh, that we call the taste word, and then of the pickle salmon is uh, the tasters. As you can see, uh, the tasters can be uh, not only a word, a single word, but also contains uh, different elements. And it is important because uh, uh, we have to take in, into account uh, for the uh, extraction system. For smelters, uh, uh, we have the same uh, uh, idea. So uh, it's every uh, object or person or animal that has or produces uh, an odor that can be perceived. Uh, so also in this case, the lexical unit is the one that is uh, underlined, smelt, and the soup is the taste, uh, is the smell source. In, uh, together with the smell source uh, and the taste source, uh, uh, we work with the qualities uh, of uh, the, the frame element of quality, uh, that is uh, every property associated uh, to describe uh, a specific uh, taste or a specific smell. Uh, so, it, of course, it is usually expressed by qualitative adjectives, uh, often preceded by an intensifier, um, but sometimes also by, by adverbs, uh, it's very common. Uh, they have different grades, uh, but as you can see from the event, uh, from the example, they are usually adjectives uh, related uh, and uh, used to describe the, um, the lexical unit. Uh, to conduct our annotation, uh, we use this uh, uh, web-based text annotation tool. It is called Inception. Uh, that is because it's uh, very easily to customize, uh, and uh, you can select the span you're interested in. You can choose your labels. Uh, so as you can see, when you select the span, you can have a choice between the uh, among the frame elements that we have. So in, in that case, uh, uh, the circumstances or a taste source, etc. Uh, and then uh, we, we, you, we can also customize uh, the uh, uh, relation so that we can take into account also anaphorical relations and uh, uh, if we have uh, the same span in two different sentences. Uh, also, Inception remembers, uh, can remember and recall what you already annotated. So uh, it suggests you, uh, and it, it's very useful because it tests in a lot of the annotation part. This is an, an example for the annotation for taste. So as you can see, the purple one are the taste words, the lexical units, and then you have the frame elements and you have to connect the frame elements to uh, the lexical unit. So every time the arrow have to go towards the lexical unit. Uh, so that you are sure that every time you have frame elements, they are 
uh, related to a, a, a specific uh, uh, face word or smell word. Same for smell. In this case, the smell word is uh, blue, and then you have the same exact thing. You collect, you have to uh, link the uh, frame elements to the lexical unit. <clears throat> So in the end, uh, what we have annotated, uh, we have 72 documents uh, uh, from uh, five different genres uh, uh, that covers the period that goes uh, from uh, uh, 1575 to 1922. Uh, as I said, the annotation is inspired by FrameNet uh, and especially by the Tonelli and Mini annotation guidelines. Uh, First of all, we have 85 documents that covers the period of 1620, 1920, and then we have 10 different juries, uh, and the annotation guidance uh, were published uh, in uh, Tonelli Menini. So, uh, in the end, uh, these are the statistics that we have for our benchmark. As you can see, even if uh, for taste we have less documents, uh, there are way more frame elements uh, because also visually you can see the lexical units for case uh, are uh, more and more than smell uh, because uh, simply the vocabulary for taste uh, is uh, way more uh, uh, rich than the one for smell. Uh, but as you can see, there is a similar trend. So the uh, most uh, frequent uh, um, annotation are the smell word and taste word, the smell and taste and quality. So that's the reason why the first version of uh, the taste uh, uh, model system is based uh, on these uh, three uh, labels uh, and are the one that we use for our analysis. Uh, this is only to say that uh, the inception uh, export format uh, is the one that you can see at the up part. And we have to convert the data into the BO format, so begin inside outside that you usually use uh, for a uh, token classification task. So you have, for example, it's it's important uh, because uh, as we've seen, uh, we have tasters that contains more than one element, and so we have to consider the span uh, of uh, maybe two, three, four elements. So in this case, uh, uh, you have the uh, off curry. B taste, uh, A taste source, uh, because it's the beginning of the frame element and the inside of the frame element. Why the other uh, label, are, or if you have, if there is no annotation, you have uh, the outside label. So after converting the data, uh, FBK experts uh, have developed uh, the system for this mal uh, extraction. Uh, so. Uh, they use uh, as a baseline uh, a single task uh, learning, uh, <clears throat> a single uh, um, a single task learning approach. So uh, they have the only task is to assign the correct label uh, among the smell word or smell source and quality, and uh, then they use the multitask uh, uh, the multitask approach. So every task uh, represents uh, one of the label. So every label is a task, uh, and it's important because uh, these, uh, uh, each task can update uh, the uh, model shape parameters, uh, and it's important because there are some that are more easy uh, to capture than the others. For example, smell word uh, has usually only one word. It's more easy that it has only one word, while the others uh, can contain uh, more than one element. This uh, system was trained on all the five, on all the nine uh, frame elements, uh, and probably is the reason why there is this uh, uh, great difference among the two uh, models. Uh, of course, uh, this one uh, was uh, conduct uh, the analysis was conducted on uh, ten different folds uh, that con each uh, split containing uh, eighty percent of the smell word and the related uh, elements, uh, ten percent for dev and ten percent for test. Uh, and then uh, these are the result of the average of the 10 uh, uh, prediction uh, results. Uh, F1 is an accuracy rate uh, uh, that is commonly used and it's the average between uh, precision and recall. Starting from this system, we run, I run some experiments for taste. Uh, I only use a multitask approach. Uh, and uh, two, uh, four different models, uh, two that are monolingual for English and two that are multilingual. Uh, and this, uh, also in this case, we have the result for the 10 folds. Uh, here, the difference is uh, uh, very slight because uh, the, the, the model are 
uh, train only on these three labels. So, but in future, we uh, plan to uh, try some experiments with all the frame elements to see whether there are different, more interesting to see. But in general, I think uh, uh, it is important because uh, it seems to assess that this uh, benchmark for taste uh, can be a, a good uh, accuracy. So uh, that in, in and probably the frame based approach can be a suitable manner for these kind of studies and to uh, have a system for the automatic construction of this uh, uh, topic. So uh, I talk about the framework, uh, I talk about the, <clears throat> the system. Uh, what can we do with this, uh, uh, this thing? Uh, first, uh, uh, we, uh, since uh, why choosing taste and smell? Because taste and smell uh, tend to be the more uh, evaluative uh, charge uh, senses among this, the five senses. Uh, so uh, we want to see, and it was already uh, shown that uh, taste tends to appear more easily into positive contexts uh, while smell into negative ones. Uh, so we want to see if it's possible to use our data and the system that we have to uh, quantify this consideration and to see if, if there are differences over time. At the same time, uh, it was already shown for Italian that uh, there is uh, not really uh, important differences in the organization of the lexicon uh, for smell over time, but there is evidence that suggests that there is a more negative oriented uh, trend. So we want to see whether in English it is the same thing or not. As I said, taste and smell seems to appear more easily into emotional charge context. Uh, and uh, as uh, Warner said that if taste and smell only have two words uh, per vocabulary, they probably have words that express uh, one positive uh, connotation and one negative one. Uh, and it's important because uh, uh, they first set, uh, they first uh, define that the smell and taste are more emotionally charged, and then uh, uh, that also the contents in which they appear tend to be more positive or more negative. Uh, Winter, uh, in his uh, study, uh, compared these two approach and uh, set and uh, shows that uh, the uh, one that is based on context uh, is the most suitable one to work with the, um, with the evaluative content of these senses. And that's the reason why we thought that using the frame-based analysis can be a very valuable mean to start this kind of uh, approach. So uh, the system <clears throat> was applied to uh, nine different corpora in English that have different genres, they have uh, different uh, time periods, uh, and uh, so what, have, what we have done is to um, run the system and extract the data. And so the frame, uh, uh, the frame elements and the legs and the tape and the smell words. And uh, this is uh, the results uh, in, in uh, terms of uh, raw frequency. So uh, as you can see, the one uh, uh, with more data is the 90th century, but in general, the trend uh, is to have uh, uh, more lexical units, uh, and uh, so the smell words uh, and uh, the other, uh, the smell source and the quality that are the ones that are more usually uh, found, while the other uh, frame elements are more sparser. So uh, we decided to um, run some analysis uh, and to uh, capture the positive and negative context. Uh, we start from the historical thesaurus of English, uh, that is this lexical resource that uh, trace uh, the, um, the meaning of the words uh, uh, from Old English uh, till uh, contemporary language. Uh, so uh, this is the categorization that we have for taste and flavor as man and uh, odor. Uh, so we have a macro category for the word, the physical sensation, then we have taste, flavor, and smell odor. And we have respectively five categories for taste uh, and uh, three categories for smell and odor. Since we are interested into the positive uh, and uh, negative uh, context, uh, we uh, first, uh, uh, while for smell, uh, we have fragrance and stench, that's a very uh, uh, opposite uh, connotation. Uh, we uh, choose for taste uh, not to use all the categories, uh, but only the uh, one that express a positive uh, connotation, a negative connotation, and then I want also to uh, test whether there is a difference uh, in the 
lacking of these two senses. So, so I maintain both the categories uh, uh, for inodorousness and uh, insipidity. This is a screenshot for the historical thesaurus, uh, and uh, I selected only these. Um, so you can ha you have the category and the subcategories, uh, and in the subcategories you can select also the part of speech you're interested in, and all the um, uh, different um, realization of this uh, 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 concept. So I uh, choose uh, for this analysis solely to. to have the nouns, adjectives, and adverbs uh, because are the most common in the smell word problem. That is the one that I want to that I use in my uh, analysis. So here, as you can see, uh, first of all, it's interesting to see that the more uh, negative-oriented lexicon is also uh, in terms of frequency, since we have a lot more uh, terms uh, for sentient thinking than fragrance and fragrant. And so this is. Uh, uh, in line with the previous studies. These uh, are uh, the results in terms of frequency. So <clears throat> uh, in, uh, they are divided per century. And uh, even if there are, it is uh, the, the interesting uh, trend are the one for stench that uh, seems to be more uh, frequent uh, in the in the begin in the first century. And then it tends to have a similar trend like the other ones. Uh, but the most interesting one uh, is the regular trend that has the lack in other category. Looking uh, more in detail to what we have in this category in terms of le lexicalization, uh, it is possible to see that there is not mm, really a great uh, differentiation, as already noted by strict leavers in Italian. But uh, it seems there are, there are an increasing in the frequency of the difference uh, of the different uh, lexical uh, realization of the concept of uh, stench during time. So uh, in the between the first century and the fourth century, there is an increase in the frequency of the different uh, lexi, uh, lexical realization. For fragrance, we don't have uh, great uh, differences. Uh, so it's more or less the same kind of lexicalization over the centuries. But the most interesting one is the lacking other category that not only has a, uh, an increase in the frequency of use, but also in the lexicalization. Uh, and it is very interesting because uh, it seems to confirm this, uh, um, the so-called deodorization hypothesis uh, for which in the uh, Western uh, cultures, uh, there is more concern for smell in the past. Uh, and uh, more and more, the smell tends to be more uh, marginalized uh, in the sense that now we have, uh, and we can see from the lexical units that we have, we have um, uh, more um, vocabulary that are not very rich for men in our culture. It was already dem demonstrated that in other cultures we have this uh, uh, richness, uh, uh, but, but it seems to be, uh, it seems so that in our data it is reflected this trend for the, uh, the increasing of uh, this uh, uh, deodorization. I also uh, see uh, this uh, neutral category, so the one that we have uh, uh, before the, th the three subcategories uh, uh, of uh, positive, negative, and uh, in others. Uh, and here I'm only interested in the fact that the most frequent terms uh, are almost the same uh, over the century. And I want to see if it's possible to look uh, also at the context of this more neutral word to see whether they have a, a different connotation. Uh, more prone to be negative or not. So uh, I use the pointwise mutual information analysis uh, that uh, takes into account not only the uh, probability of two words to co-occur to, to co together, but also uh, their independent probability. And I choose uh, as a target uh, word. So with uh, here, uh, I choose a target word the small the smell words that are more frequent uh, in the uh, neutral category that are smell smell and odor odor where smell is uh, uh, the uh, a problem of exportation with the OCR so it's uh, usually found uh, especially in the uh, 18th century i divide it into four temporal span the one that we use for our uh, uh, for the trend, to see the trend of this uh, uh, tempo in terms of temporal uh, uh, free, um, 
increase or decrease. And then I choose the top uh, 50 uh, PMA scores. I also set a threshold for the core currencies at 50 in order not to have, uh, uh, to avoid the problem to have uh, uh, very rare uh, pairs that, uh, that may be considered into this uh, analysis uh, and not, not being very relevant. So after that, uh, I manually annotated the uh, 50 uh, quality uh, with the most, uh, ah, of course, uh, the PMA scores uh, is computed between the smell word and the qualities uh, associated. So we have the target uh, word that is the smell word and then all the qualities uh, uh, with the highest uh, score. So I manually annotated uh, in terms of these uh, five categories, uh, uh, bad, good, quantity, intensity, neutral, and source base. Uh, and here it's uh, very um, straightforward that his uh, smell tends to appear more easily with uh, negative qualities. Uh, so it seems to have that even if it is a, a more neutral word, uh, it tends to appear in a, a negative context, uh, apart from the uh, from the 18th century, in uh, which we have uh, um, this uh, quantity intensity more uh, easily used, uh, but in general, it is more bat related. What is interesting is that for odor, that is another neutral word, uh, we have a different tendency. Even if good tend to decrease over time, there is a, a, a very marked uh, increasing of the source base uh, qualities associated to, um, to order. And it's interesting because now the contemporary language, English, uh, is uh, more prone to use uh, uh, source base uh, uh, language to, for senses. So it's uh, very in line with that. But it's interesting because uh, uh, it seems that different words uh, can have uh, different uh, um, uh, behavior also in the same semantic field. And so the, it's, it can be interesting in the future to see whether there are differences also in the connotation of specific words. So that for smell, and as I said, for smell, we have a lot of data because uh, they are extracted from our system. But um, for what concerns the taste the benchmark, uh, this is only an exploration of the data that we have. Uh, as you can see, the trend is similar. We have uh, a lot of taste words and a lot of taste sources and qualities um, distributed over time. We have and much sparser uh, for the other frameworks. I try to see uh, if it's possible to see also in our data, even if far are uh, fewer than the one for smell, uh, if there is a tendency that can be recognizable or can be interesting to investigate. So also in this case, I use these uh, categories taken from the thesaurus. And these are the results. Uh, the trend seems to be very similar. So I think that our data are too, uh, too few to have a very important consideration. But I think that it's interesting the fact that insecurity category has a totally different trend for the one uh, of uh, lacking order for uh, smell. That can be interesting because it seems that uh, this, uh, the trend of uh, the lacking order in uh, increasing can be a, a property of uh, smell. And uh, so it seems to sustain the hypothesis of uh, the otherization. Also in this case, uh, I looked at the lexicalization and uh, uh, as you can see for severiness, uh, the lexicon uh, tend to remain the same uh, and it's uh, rich in, in almost the same way. While for negative, uh, this is, is way less uh, lexicalized uh, than the positive one, but uh, it seems that have a more, um, a more marked lexicalization over time. So, uh, a, if you look at the first century and then the others uh, in the um, 19th century have uh, more lexicalization. But I think this is probably also related to the data that we have more than a real trend. What is interesting is that in any case, uh, the lexicon for the positive uh, uh, relation is more uh, rich than the one for negative one, as already shown in previous studies. Uh, this is the last analysis. Uh, since uh, in the benchmark data, we also annotated the literary genres uh, and we assigned genres uh, uh, to a document. 
I also operate an analysis to see uh, whether there is a difference in distribution of uh, these uh, semantic categories uh, in terms of positive and negative connotation, also uh, in the genres. And uh, I think that what is uh, very interesting is that uh, two uh, categories, uh, this one, uh, have a, a very different trend for states and smell. So here, medicine and botany tend to be more positive related, while travel ethnography more negative uh, related. But for smell, it's exact contrary. So we have for medicine, botany uh, tends to be more negative related, uh, while for travel, travel ethnography, it is more positive uh, related. So uh, I use the frames uh, to analyze, uh, to try to analyze analyze the topic related to these uh, uh, genres uh, by looking at the smell source more frequently used uh, uh, in these uh, uh, genres. And it's interesting for, as you can see, for medicine botany uh, in the smell source uh, category, well, we tend to have more um, uh, health-related concept or disease-related concept that is then to be more uh, negative related, while for taste source, uh, it tends to be to describe plants or to describe food, so it tends to be more uh, positive or neutral correlated. For travel ethnography, uh, it's interesting the fact that uh, since uh, we talk about voyages and traveling and travelers, uh, the negative correlation of taste sources can be correlated to the fact that food uh, uh, that is uh, the most frequent food that is assigned to this uh, uh, jury uh, is uh, tends to be a foreign food, uh, so probably not really uh, uh, pleasant to the palate of uh, foreign uh, uh, people. While for smell source, uh, it is very neutral, uh, so it tends to describe landscapes, uh, plants, uh, or trees, etc. So, to conclude, uh, uh, this. Uh, um, this analysis seems to uh, show that uh, the uh, smell lexicon, differently from what street cleaver see, uh, as, as seen for Italian, has uh, um, had a lexical evolution over time and uh, uh, have a differentiation in its le lexicalization, especially with negative lexicon increasing its uh, variability. Taste, even if uh, we cannot uh, uh, say much with our data, we can see that it possess a richer vocabulary uh, for positive terms uh, in, instead of the negative one. Uh, the interesting data uh, about category is the evolution of the latent cate order category that seems to be in line with the deorderization hypothesis, also sustained by the fact that uh, the taste uh, insipidity didn't have the same uh, evolution, that it has a very different uh, evolution. And then that the frame-based analysis can be a very valuable mean to study this kind of uh, uh, topic, uh, and uh, especially the uh, context uh, of use uh, of these uh, uh, senses. In the future, uh, we uh, want to experiment also with some historical models like MacBert for English, uh, and uh, to try to uh, change the configuration of uh, the parameters. Uh, and uh, to use uh, the, the so to run the taste system uh, once we had on uh, different corpora to have uh, uh, more um, data and have more robust analysis uh, in, that can, we can compare with the one for smells, and then analyzing the statistical significance of uh, uh, time or the genre on the negative and positive context uh, for smell and taste uh, and on the uh, deodorization hypothesis. Thank you very much. Um, that's all. Thank you very much.